Though when looking at the cube, the, pairing up these edges seems to be quite a difficult task, it is actually pretty simple. The first thing you want to do is you want to look in the bottom right of these three pieces. And you can see you have an orange and yellow edge piece. So you want to look around the cube for an or the orange and yellow center piece, which you can pair this one up with. And it's right here. So you want to move it over just like this. Now as you can see, the orange and yellow and orange and yellow, they match. You do not want this to happen. So what you want to do is remove this out so that you can just do that. And it will allow these to be opposite. So when they pair up, they match. Next, you want to look at this piece. As you can see, it's the red and green, and it is getting knocked out. So what you want to do is you want to look around for the red and green center piece. And it's right here. So, I'm going to take that red and green center piece and move it over to right there. Now, as you can see, the green, the, the green and red are opposite. And they are the same, and they, so they can pair up. So what, what we're going to do now, now that we have everything positioned, take the, that and pair it up, knock it out, replace it with the center that we already have pre-positioned, and then bring it back and restore the orange. This should pair up the orange and the yellow and the red and the green. Next, after pairing up the first two edges, you want to flip the cube like this. So you should have two solved here and one unsolved here. This is the red and yellow. So you look for the red and the yellow center piece, which it happens to be right here. They're the same. So what you want to do is you want to take this and move it so it is the opposite. It is knocking out the green and black edge piece, so you want to look for the green and black center piece. And the green and black center piece is right here. So as you can see, they, these match. So what I do when they match is I turn it and bring it down like that. So they're just opposite. However, if I get into a position where they don't match, what I do is I turn it back and then bring it down. So either way, they are still opposite, and I don't really have to think about pre-positioning them. So now, once again, we're going to pair these up, just like that, and doing the move, solve it two more, the green and the black, and the red and the yellow. However, when solving these three pieces, you may come across this following, where you look at it, and you see that you have the red and the greens, and the orange and the black. So you look for an orange and black center, and you pair it up. But then, you, when you go and look for the piece you're replacing, it is this red and green. And the red and greens are here, so you cannot just move it over. This is a parity problem that occurs in the 7x7. Seven seven. You have to memorize an algorithm for this, and this is the only algorithm you need to memorize if you're going by my method. This is the algorithm for solving this parity. If you do not know the notation for the V-cube, you can look on my other video, which gives the notations for the V-cube 7. The algorithm follow as, is, is as follows. Little L3 inverted, U2, little L3 inverted, U2, F2, little L3 inverted, F2, little R3, U2, little R3 inverted, U2, and then little L3 twice. So if you do this algorithm, you will see that it actually, well first I gotta find my pieces, and here we are. We have the... No, we aren't. This parity, dim as demonstrated, it looks like this. You want to take your, your, th your pieces, like this, the piece you want to swap, this orange and black, and this red and green, and put them in the U face. Then you do the algorithm. And as you can see, the red and green swap places with the orange and black. Another algorithm, that, another parity that you may come across is when you have an orange and black solved and a blue and orange. So you go to pair it up with the blue and orange, but however, you, when you go to replace it, it replaces the blue and orange, which is right there. And then you also have the orange and black right there. When this occurs, all you do is you take them, you take the two that is solved right here, and you put them in the bottom left hand corner. Then you rotate it so they're both in the up face 
and you do the algorithm. <sighs> Next, as you can see, we have two and two paired up. So what you want to do? Do you want to make it so that this and this can just swap? And as you, as you probably know already, we have an algorithm for this. It's this one. So really, for that parity that I'm for the parity I'm showing you right now, all you have to do is just do the first out the algorithm just twice. As soon as you have solved all the pairs of three edges on the cube, as you can see, all of them are solved. You want to move on it and pair the out outer edges with the three that you have paired up now. This solving these is exactly the same as solving the first three. What you do is you have the orange and black here, so you look for the orange and black pairs. And looking around the cube, they are ba back here. So you put them up, and they're the same, which you don't want. You want them opposite. Now you have the orange and blue, so you look for the orange and blue, which is right here. And once again, you want an opposite. Now, you take the orange and black, replace it. You do the same exact move that you did when pairing up just these three. And now you have these paired up, and these paired up. Whenever you come up across the parodies, they will be the exact same parodies, except look, just look a little bit different. When solving for, when using the algorithm, instead of rotating three layers at a time, you will only rotate two layers at a time. Now that you've solved all the edges, you want to move on to the final step. The final step in solving the V-cube 7 is solving it like a 3x3. Three three. So, I'm going to solve it just like a 3x3. Three three. Now, as you can see, we're on the final step, and obviously, this is the most glorifying moment of solving the VCube 7. You can... And there you have it. If you have followed all the steps correctly, you should have solved the V-Cube 7 now. Thank you for watching and please comment and subscribe on my videos.